thoughts are, are with um, the families and everybody affected at Olathe East, where there was a shooting today uh, at the school. And it's just, it, it's so unfortunate. And there's some low hanging fruit that, that our country needs to grab. And, um, and we need to move forward. And, and right now I'm just thinking about the families and I've been thinking about them all day long. Not, not just the ones affected directly with the shooting itself, but all the kids, you know, as a, as, as a father of four, um, you know, all the children that have been traumatized by the school lockdown and, 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 the, and, and the worries and uh, just everything that goes into it. Um, it's just a nightmare. So uh, just just really thinking about uh, thinking about everybody there and, and, and really hoping for for some of the low hanging fruit to be grabbed on, on some policies. Okay. Questions for coaches, student athletes? Yeah, coach, that's a great message. Um, a little bit about the game. Uh, there was a lot of you know, change, change in scoring, uh, lead changes there in the first and second half. Talk to me a little bit about how, you know, the emotion that was played in that game and, and what you guys felt there. Yeah, well, obviously we came to fight, and it didn't matter if we were going to, you know, fight fight for a call that maybe went didn't go our way or, or try to fight a big 6'9", 300-pound guy inside, Johnny Clausen, who's a really good basketball player and, and he's dynamic form, but we weren't going to get pushed around. And, and sometimes that meant that, you know, um, Unfortunately, they were, it got more physical and we, we put ourselves in the positions where, you know, it, it really looked chippy and it looked chippy on both sides. But I think that's, you know, as long as there isn't a line that's crossed, I don't think there was, you know, I'll go back to replay and, and, and we'll be we'll be watching this game many times over again. Um, we want to toe the line in terms of being physical, in terms of being chippy. We certainly don't want to cross it, so I hope we didn't. But, um, you know, we're, we needed to be the aggressor tonight. And I thought that, I thought that, we, for, for the most part, we were. You know, we switch ball screens, so our guards are asked to do a, a tremendous task on their bigs. And um, I, I, I thought overall we did a good job. Um, you know, the biggest difference in this game was in the, in, in the second half. There was about a six-minute run where we just weren't executing defensively and getting stops. And and when that takes place, you know, we're a team all year long. Again, we finished 29 overall, and in and, and, and our 20 wins. We're a team that defends. We're a team that defends for 30 to 35 minutes of the game. And I'm not quite sure we got to there tonight. I mean, Washburn shot right at 60% in the second half. We just need to be a little better on that end of the floor if we wanted to, to achieve what, what our goal was tonight. Yeah, for, uh, for Trey and Jamari, uh, there was some really, really high level guard play in this game. I don't think that was any surprise from both teams. Uh, I think each team starting one and two guard had, had 20 points or better, including you guys, you two. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how that matchup went, uh, you two versus, uh, you know, uh, Diamond and, and Jalen on the other side. Um, it was a matchup we were pretty uh, familiar with. Obviously, this was our third time playing, uh, so we kind of knew what we were out for. Uh, like Coach said, it was just, we, I think we let them just get comfortable in the second half. And once they did that, they could make shots, and they did that. So, uh, yeah, it was just we weren't locked in defensively that second half, which led to I feel like their guards getting into that mode that they got in. <clears throat> All year, um, you know, coach has been telling us to not just outscore p uh, players or teams, but, you know, win the defensive battle. And, uh, as you mentioned, we, we came up short. Uh, it was a six or seven minute stretch where we just weren't executing our defense um, and they kind of got away with it. Um, our guys fought hard to, you know, chip away at the lead that they had, but at the end, you know, we can't give up you know, open threes and stuff like that to a good team like that, that Washburn has, so, you know. Trey, just talk, a lot of talk this week about your foot and everything. I mean, how did that go through? And um, I try, I, I played through it. Um, I did a lot of rehab, uh, got a lot of work in with my foot, and it got better. But obviously, it was still lingering uh, pain or whatever. But, yeah, I just try to battle with my team, try to uh, extend our season. Obviously, we came up short, but... I just was willing to put it all on the line and do that for my team. So what, happy with that. And, and what do you feel you got out of this one year at Emporia State? I got a lot. Uh, I built a lot of brother brotherhoods with a lot of my brothers now that I call. Um, tremendous uh, relationship with the, the whole coaching staff down to the uh, student manager. Like it's just a real culture that was built here, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, super uh, thankful for Coach Doty and the coaching staff for you know what I'm saying doing what they did for me, having trust in me, believing in me this first year, and just letting me let me uh, play my game and have a have a successful season. So I'm just very thankful and 
we're thankful for you too, Trey. For sure. <laughs> 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 we're thankful for you too. Glad and best decision I made coming to Portland State my last year. So I'm very proud. All right, then Jamar, I got to ask you. I mean, just talk about your four years in Portland State. Oh man, I could write a book. <laughs> uh, but um, where do I start, man? You know, coming in here, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, <clears throat> playing for Coach Doty has been a blessing, man. You know, he's one of my favorite, not my favorite coach I've ever played with, played for. Um, you know, and we knew that it was gonna take some uh, adjusting and you know hardships and whatever, but. You know, from the first year I got injured to second year, me uh, having to t having to adjust from playing at a D3 JUCO, coming into the toughest league in the D2, until last year playing okay, into this year I think uh, was one of my better years. And um, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that I've helped um, flip this <clears throat> Emporia State program around. Um, and we, we set the bar, as Coach, Coach Lavery mentioned in the locker room earlier. Um, so it's been a real blessing, man. You know, not only um, are they there when we scored 30 or whatever, but, you know, Doty and Lave and, you know, my, the coaches here have been with me since day one, man. They've been they've been with me <clears throat> while I was going through my lowest times in life. You know, as you guys know, uh, probably don't, but my mom passed away. And, uh, you know, it was a, a no-brainer me coming back here uh, when they, uh, you know, when they showed up at my mom's funeral. So that just speaks volume of, you know, we, we mentioned brothers, you know, we, we, we Mention family when we, you know, huddle up and stuff like that. But you know, it's it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to actually take action. And um, I'm just very appreciative of Coach Doug. You know, I love him. Sure. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I want to echo some of what Jamari said. You know, I, tonight he eclipsed the top ten scoring all time at Emporia State. He needed 22. He got 23, and um, and he passes Dale Cushenberry. He's one of the all-time greats at Emporia State. And, Jamari went through the lean years when we got the job. You know, we inherited the position. It was, you know, this job was was dead last in the MIAA. And we got it back up and we received votes in the national poll much of this year. We have two electric guards. You know, and coaching two guys like this is a lot of fun because, you know, not only do you get to coach them and try to help create space and, you know, we're not really teaching. You know, Trey didn't come in here. We didn't we didn't teach Trey how to play like this. I mean, Trey, Trey came in with this and, as a one-year guy, but we, we help create space and create a culture that, that, that helps him. But when you get to coach two guys with this type of ability, you're not only going to be their coach, but you're also going to be their fan. You know, like I'm... I'm rooting for these guys. Number one, when they score a lot of points and they're efficient, that's good for our basketball team. So when it's good for our basketball team, um, that we, we want them to score more and keep being efficient. Um, additionally, uh, we're watching them climb and break single season records and be number one in the NCAA in scoring from, from the beginning of the season till to the end of the season. And, and, and we're watching Jamari climb this all-time scoring list and doing it in three active years, two and a half if you count the COVID years. So these guys are just electric. Not only am I their coach, uh, but, but I'm their fan. And now that they're gone, uh, you know, in terms of college eligibility, they're never going to be gone from, from the family, but from eligibility, I'm going to use the F word with them. They're going to be my friends. And uh, we don't like to use it uh, while they're still here. Uh, but I mean, Jamar and I have been so close already for so long. He's about my age anyway. No, I'm just kidding. He's been, he's been working at this a long time. So, uh, but the best thing with Jamar, you, 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 know, you know, you know, you know, Jamar eats salmon and asparagus every day for for, for, for dinner. Like he is so cut off. He's in better shape than our our 18 year old. So now it. Uh, we're, we're, the program's in a good place. It's a big credit to these two, as well as I want to mention Brendan Van Dyke, who who was huge for our team, and then uh, a Marquise McCray, who obviously you're not going to. He's like the lineman. You know, you you don't you don't give a lot of credit to the lineman. You give credit to the running back. But the lineman does a lot of that work, and Marquise helps set the culture for this program. So we just we love our guys. Uh, we're in a good spot. This this isn't the end of our team. This is the beginning of it, and it's a big thanks to these two. So thanks for the questions on that. Thank you guys.